Good evening, everybody, and this is Pastor Josue, and I'm excited that you are joining us here for some worship and uh, for some Bible study. And uh, we're going to sing a song uh, called uh, The Blessing. And if you are, uh, maybe you haven't heard the song, but it's a new one. And, and we just want to pray this. It's from Numbers chapter 6, verse 24 and 26. It's the um, Abrahamic blessing. It's the, it's the, the, the blessing that God gives uh, uh, the, the people. And, uh, and so we, we want to confess that over our lives. And we just receive that blessing here today. So I hope this is a blessing for you. And, uh, and, and, and just join us if you, uh, the lyrics will be on there. So uh, worship with us as we hear it. The Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you. agree with that blessing. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and that you may his favor, may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. May his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming and your going in your weeping and rejoicing he is for you he is for you
may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming and your going in your weeping and rejoicing he is for you he is for you So we're going to be in uh, Genesis chapter 21, uh, verses 8 through uh, 21. Uh, Genesis 21, verses 8 through 21. So go ahead and grab your Bible. And uh, as we, uh, we're going to jump into the Word of God, we have been uh, talking on Wednesday nights about leading our family, about our marriage, about our, our, uh, how we, we, we should be better parents, we should be better spouses. And so uh, today, and this is, this is perfect because this is just aligning with what uh, our, our series is and just what God's doing. Uh, our, our, we're going to be in Genesis 21, and, and the, the, the title of, uh, of, to, of today's message is Protect Your Children. Protect Your Children. And uh, especially right now, I mean, goodness gracious, all the stuff that's going on, all the things that are happening, we definitely want to uh, uh, protect our children. And, and so uh, we're going to look at, at, at different ways that we're going to pray for God's protection uh, over our children and over our family. So uh, let's, let's, let's look at that and go to Genesis chapter 21. And uh, we're going to look at that together. Let's, let's just open up in prayer before we do that. Let's open up in prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you. Lord, I thank you for our family. I thank you for our spouse. I thank you, Lord, for so many rich blessings that you've given us. I thank you that we uh, are awake and we're open and we're alive today. And Father, I thank you that I can transmit the word of God through this technology. Father, I thank you that people are, are here. They're here to listen. They're ready to receive what you have for them. And God, I just, I just pray that whoever is here, whoever is listening, God, it, this word is going to be a huge blessing to their hearts and to their lives. We honor you. We pray that our hearts are ready to receive whatever you have for us, God, here today. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's go to Genesis 21, verse 8 through 21, and, and it says this, So the child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast on the same day that Isaac was we now in Genesis 21 we see that um, Isaac is has, has been born. Okay, we've been talking about Abraham, and Abraham finally in Genesis uh, uh, in in, the, in Genesis 21 he he gets the the baby Isaac and he receives the uh, the, the, the promise, and um, and he they go through the time where uh, he's he's being uh, weaned. You know, meaning that he's going to stop nursing. Uh, so he could have been actually he could have been two years old, maybe possibly even four years old. We don't know uh, um, on how, how the, the, depending on the age that he was uh, he was being uh, weaned away from 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 mom. And so it, 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 he was a little bit older. But but by this time, Ishmael, if you remember Ishmael, who who Abraham had through Sarah, um, they, she was, um, he was already older. He was, he was born. He had lived a while. He was a little bit older already. And so you've got uh, half-brother Isaac and half-brother Ishmael who are living together. 
I can't imagine you've got Sarah and Hagar living together. I mean, this has got, you know, why we should only marry one person, okay? Because, you know, it's just causing some baby mama drama uh, going on right here. And so uh, there were some conflicts going on, some conflicts happening here. And so we just want to uh, uh, look at this together and, and, and see what was going on. Now, we can't forget that God's promise was going to be through Isaac, not through Ishmael. And this is a tough situation that they, God didn't put themselves in. They put themselves in the situation, okay? God had nothing to do with this. It was totally them. Uh, it was totally Isaac and Abraham, and now they're paying for it. This is what's going on. Uh, they're paying for these consequences. Verse 9 says this, uh, And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, whom she had borne to Abraham, scoffing. So Ishmael was scoffing at the the younger, younger, uh, uh, to, to Isaac. Therefore, she said to Abraham, cast out this bondwoman and her son for the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, namely with Isaac. And the matter was very displeasing in Abraham's sight because of his son. So I, Abraham stuck in the middle. He's like, I got, I love Isaac. I love Ishmael. I, I'm, what do I do? What, what do I do? Verse 12, God tells him this. But God said to Abraham, do not let it be displeasing. Do not let it be displeasing in your sight because of the lad or because of your bondwoman. Whatever Sarah has said to you, whatever Sarah has said to you, listen to her voice. For in Isaac, you, your seed shall be called. Yet I will also make a nation of the son of the bondwoman because he is your seed. Verse 14 says, so Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and putting it on her shoulder, he gave it and the boy to Hagar and sent her away. Then she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. That verse right there, that little verse right there, as a parent, as a dad. As a man, that bothers me. I'm going to talk to you about that. I'm going to talk to you about that. Because uh, here, here, here's the main reason, okay? Here's the reason. As a man, even if Ishmael is his son, okay? Ishmael is his son. I want you to go back and look, look at that verse again. Look at that verse in 14, all right? Look what he, what he gives him when he sends him away. He says, Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and put it on her shoulder, he gave it to her. That's all he gave her. Bread and water. Bread and water. That's all he gave. Abraham, you were rich. You were blessed. We know that because we saw God's blessings on Abraham. So he had money. He had a bunch of stuff. He, he had lots of cattle. And what does he do? He just gives her a loaf of bread and a skin of water. That's it. And he sends her off, sends her away. I, I, I want to I say this real quick. If you are a man, okay, if you're a man, you have children, you need to step up and take care of your kids, all right? You need to step up and feed your kids, take care of your kids. And let me tell you something right now that your kids are at home. I'm going to make this cl clear for everybody, all right? If your kids are home, guess what? You are the father. You're not babysitting. You're the parent, okay? You're supposed to take care of them. So don't say you're babysitting your kids. They're your kids. They're your responsibility. You are the parent, so take care of them. Don't expect society to raise them up. It's your job to raise them up, right? It's your job to feed them. It's your job to clothe them. So get up in the morning, go find a job. If you don't have one, go get one, all right? It's your responsibility to take care of your family, all right? I'm tired of seeing guys sitting out there loafing around, not, not serving their family. I'm, I'm telling you, you need to step up and take care of your family. Don't be lazy. All right. Don't be lazy. Be a man and take care of your fi family and be responsible. All right. That's what you're supposed to do. All right. If you were willing enough to knock her up, if you're willing enough to get her pregnant, then guess what? You should be willing enough to take care of her and raise her and pay for it. All right. So 
for, for you don't 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 call don't, don't be mad that you've got to pay child support and all that stuff it's your responsibility to do that every every man out there you, it's your responsibility to take to take care of your children all right so that verse really as a, as a father as a man it bothers me because abraham was willing to do that he, he was just willing to just give her bread and, and, and water and just send her away so 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 you as a man make sure that you take care of that's part of protecting your kids part of protecting your kids is providing them what they need to do. All right, I'm already getting fired up. So let's 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 move on. Let's move on. All right. So uh, if if you look at it in verse, um, let, let's look at verse uh, verse verse uh, fifteen. Okay. Verse fifteen says, and the water, and the water in the skin was used up. Yeah, because it was only one skin. They drank it all, and they were living in the middle of the desert. You know, and the water in the skin was used up, and she placed the boy under one of the shrubs. Then she went and sat down across from him at a distance, about a bow, a bow shot. For she said to herself, let me not see the death of the boy. So she sat opposite him and lifted her voice and wept. Verse 17. And God heard the voice of the lad. Then the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven and said to her, what ails you, Hagar? Fear not, for God has heard the voice of the lad where he is. Aren't you glad God listens to our prayers? He's good, and he was listening to our prayers. Verse 18, Arise, lift up the lad, and hold him with your hand, for I will make him a great nation. Verse 19, Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. And she went and filled the skin with water and gave the lad a drink. So God was with the lad and he grew and dwelt in the wilderness and became an archer. He dwelt in the wilderness of Paran and his mother took a wife uh, to, and his and his mother took a wife for him from the land of Egypt. Now, I, I want you to I want you to see this, uh, this very carefully. All right. All right. Sarah saw. Ishmael treat Isaac badly and and she was not going to put up with it. So uh, she knew that if they grew up together, Ishmael would be a roadblock to Isaac's growth. Okay, so I, 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 I get that. I see that. I totally understand that. God had something important for her son and she wasn't going to let anyone try to take that away from him. Listen, as a parent, that's what you're supposed to do. You are supposed to do that and take care of your kids and make sure that nobody, nobody takes care. Nobody gets in the way of your kids uh, growing up and, and fulfilling God's, God's promise. And that, that's what Sarah did. That, that's great. Great job as, as a mother. All right. But, but, but here's, here's, here's one thing that I, I do want to, want to, want to emphasize. All right. In verse 14, he says, you know, in verse 14, when, when they only give him some bread and water and send, and sent him out, uh, uh, basically, listen, Hagar at that point became a single mom. She became a single mom. Nobody was taking care of her. Nobody was taking care of her child. How many single parents do we have out there right now that have no father in the home, that have no substance in their home? And I want to tell you something, moms, especially for some of you that are, that are single. Listen, when, when, when Abraham, the man, was not willing to provide, God provided. Okay? God was willing to put his blessings over her, over the family, over the children. God sent an angel to talk to her, to intervene. She was about to give up. She was about to, to throw in the towel. But God said, no, I've got a purpose for you. I've got a purpose for your child. I still have a purpose for them. And so, and so God was willing to intervene. So let me tell you something. Every child matters to God. Every, every person matters to God. And so God is willing to intervene and say, listen, I, I, I'm, you're, you're not going to quit. We're not going to let you quit. In fact, I'm going to bless you. And so, so for, for single moms out there, and listen, for you that are raising your, 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 your child by yourself, single moms, single parents, I want to I wanna, I wanna pray real quick before we move forward. I want to pray God's blessing over you, that God supernaturally blesses you just like he did Hagar, that God supernaturally will provide for you just like he did Hagar that God will open up the doors that right now that you're going through, you're probably having a babysit. You're probably having to watch your kid. You're probably having to work at the same time. You're doing all kinds of stuff. Maybe you're paying somebody extra to, to watch your kid because your daycare is closed. But I want to tell you that God is with you. He is for you and he's going to make a way where there is no way. So let's pray right now. Father, 
In the name of Jesus, I pray for those single parents that are going on, those single parents that are struggling right now, those single parents that are having to go through so many, so much stuff. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you supernaturally provide for them, that you bless them, Father, exceedingly, abundantly, above all that they can ask or think. Father, there may be a man that walked out. There may be a person that walked out on their life, but Father, you have not walked out. In fact, you're living inside their home. You're living inside of their heart, Father, and I pray right now that your spirit is reaching out to them to give them strength, to give them boldness, to give them uh, help, Father, in the time of need. And I thank you, Lord, that you're blessing them supernaturally, Father, that one way or another, God, you are going to intervene in that situation. I thank you, Lord, that blessings, Father, are chasing your, your family, your children, and you're listening to those prayers in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you, Father, and call that out. Amen and amen. Now, here's the thing. All right, one, so let me, let, me, let me emphasize this again. All right. Abraham, he 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 didn't provide much for his son Ishmael. Yes, he made a mistake. Yes, he isn't the son of the promise. Uh, But Abraham, hey, you're rich, you're blessed. Why don't you actually give your son more than the bare minimum? Uh, You know, uh, listen, so so it's important that we go and we and we and we bless him. Let, Let me ask you something. Could it be? Could it be that? Some of the hatred that we see between Arabs and Jews could be because it's carrying over from Abraham abandoning his son Ishmael. Okay, but let's think about it. I want you to think about it. All right, he came. What did what did Ishmael become? The Bible tells us. Look, look, look back and 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 look at verse twenty. Okay, look at verse twenty with me. It says that he became an archer. Do you see that? In verse 20, it says that he became an archer, all right? What what does that mean, Pastor, that he was an archer? An arch, okay, the bow and an arrow was was the the most lethal weapon that they had at the time, okay? That was the most lethal weapon that they had at the time. So what 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 did he become? He became aggravated. He became a little violent. He became a little uh, upset. And how many children... Okay, how many young people grow up without a father and become violent? How many children grow up without a dad, without someone to be there or, or, or worse? What about what about Ishmael? He was abandoned. He was told by by his father, go ahead and leave. I don't want you in my house. And they gave him just bread and water and he was sent out. Don't you think that was traumatizing for this young man? Of course it was. And so from there, from that point on, he, he, he became resentful to Abraham. He became resentful to, uh, to, to, to Isaac for sure. And he became resentful to, to that family. So guess what? That resentment carries over from one generation to the next. And that is still going on right now. When you see the conflict between the Jews and the Arabs, it's still going on. So could it be, could it be that Abraham would have done, a, if he would have done a better job of taking care of them, even from distance, maybe we wouldn't have the struggles and the issues that we have now? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm just asking because we know now psychologically what can happen to a child when, when we don't protect them. So both of the children, Abraham, it was your responsibility to take care of both of them, both Ishmael and Isaac. OK, now I want us to I want us to emphasize uh, this real, real quick. Uh, the Bible tells you in First Timothy, chapter five, verse eight says, if anyone does not provide for his own and especially for those of his household, he has denied the faith and it's worse than an unbeliever. So 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8. So if you don't, if, if you're not providing for your family, the Bible tells you you're you're worse than an unbeliever. So make sure that you are providing for for, for your family. So uh, a, a couple of things that we're gonna pray about, and I want you, I want you to to write this down and 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 keep this with you. This is what we need to pray about for, for our children. So number one, we're gonna pray about is pray for God's protection. Pray for God's protection. Pray that God protects them on their way to school, 
in school, from sickness, from bullies, from bad friends, from influences, from temptation. Listen, you got to pray for them right now, right now, that even if they're young, even if they're teenagers, even if they're, they were just born, you need to pray for them right now that they, that, that they don't marry the wrong person, that they marry the right person. You got to pray for protection over them from the devil. You got to pray for protection from the things of the world. You got to pray for protection so that from, from putting them themselves in bad situations so so we've got to pray for protection over our children make sure that they're that they're protected that they're taken care of and and and, and that's that's what Sarah had to do Sarah said I, I gotta protect my child I gotta protect Isaac because I know he's got a future so I've, I've got to make sure that that nothing gets in his way and so that's that's exactly what she did and so you and I as parents we've got to do everything possible to protect our children and pray for protection over them. The best thing you can do, of course, is pray. Some of us are here because of prayer. All right. We went ahead and did some stupid stuff, but God protected us because somebody was out there praying for us when we were messing up and doing some wrong stuff. So God is protecting. He's with us. And so we want to. This is what the Bible says. And a couple of verses of what the Bible says. Second Thessalonians chapter three, verse three says this. But the Lord is faithful who will establish you and guard you from the evil one. That's the promise from God. But the Lord is faithful who will establish you and guard you from the evil one. Psalm 46 verse 1 says this, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. He's a very present help in trouble. Psalm 57 1 says this, be merciful to me, O God, be merciful to me, for my soul trusts in you, and in the shadow of your wings I will make my refuge until these calamities have passed away. We've got to make sure that we are in the shadow of his wings, that we are covered with him, that we cover our family with his protection, with the blood of Jesus. Psalm 138, verse 7 and 8 says this, Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will revive me. You will stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies and your right hand will save me. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the works of your hands. And that's what God has for us. Listen, God has protection over us. He's protecting our family. He's protecting our children. So take a moment. And pray for your kids. Pray for your, your family as well. Point number two. Here's what we got to pray for. Pray for God's wisdom. Pray for God's wisdom. All right. We need wisdom in raising our kids these days. And our kids need wisdom themselves. They need wisdom themselves. So stop saying that, that you know, that, that you know, back in my day, blah, blah, blah. Listen, these kids are not going through the same things that you went through. OK. All right. You didn't have to go through the coronavirus. These guys are. All right. As children, they're, they're going through this stuff. All right. They're going through some crazy things going on right now. And, and back in your day, listen, they didn't have cyberbullying. Back in your day, the, the TV shows uh, with, with well, they didn't have TV shows with curse words and nudity. All right. Uh, they, the, they didn't have PG-13 movies dropping F-bombs or pornography available 24-7 in little devices that we call cell phones. All right. And back in your day, they weren't school shootings. They weren't drugs and alcohol uh, wasn't prevalent. Uh, some of you uh, had both of your parents in your home. All right. Uh, many kids now only have one. All right. We need God's wisdom for our kids in this time of need. We need God's wisdom. Abraham goes and prays to God and, and ask him, say, God, what should I do about my son? And he prays about it in verse 12 and verse 13. God gives him an answer and he tells him what to do. So in, when you're going through this situation, when you're going through this stuff, guess what? The, James tells us that if we lack wisdom, all we got to do is ask. All we got to do is pray and God will give us wisdom. All right. Here's some verses about what wisdom does. Proverbs 1 5 says this. A wise man will hear and increase learning. A man of understanding will attain wise wisdom counsel. A wise man will hear and increase learning. 
and a man of understanding will attain wise counsel. That means that that person is going to long for wisdom. And listen, you, if you don't know what to do, talk to parents who are doing a good job or have been doing a good job. Talk to them, ask them for wisdom, read some books out there and find out what, I mean, focus on the family or other stuff like that and find out what, what, what are, what are some good books out there that you can read for, for, for raising your kids. I mean, there's, there's all kinds of stuff that you, lots of resources that you can go out there and find out on for raising your kids. Proverbs chapter one, verse seven says this, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Listen, if you're a parent, I don't want to hear you say, well, I don't know what to do with this kid. All right. That's your, let me tell you what that Bible, what the verse just said, fools despise wisdom and instruction. So when you despise wisdom, when you despise instruction, when you're not willing to go search it out, when you're not willing to find out, when you're not willing to read a book and pick up a book, or maybe go take a class or maybe go find somebody. Let me tell you, throw it down, throw it uh, out there as well. If you're not willing to even bring your kids to church all right so at least they can come and learn about the about the word of god then don't come back and say i don't know what to do with the child i don't know what to do with them listen it's our responsibility to pray for wisdom and ask for wisdom and say god what is it what do you want me to do all right proverbs chapter 4 verse 5 and 6 says this get wisdom get understanding do not forget my words or turn away from them Do not forsake wisdom and she will protect you. Love her and she will watch over you. So uh, in everything that we do, we've got to obtain wisdom. We've got to ask for it. We've got to pray for it. We've got to ask God to give us wisdom. You know, uh, we all know uh, now the, 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 you know, great Surgeon General Ben Carson, right? And he even ran for president, did that great, brilliant man, smart man. Well, if you go back and you look at his story, he was in trouble all the time growing up, you know, with a single mom, uh, him and his brothers are just, they would get in trouble all the time. And you know what the mom did, the mom prayed. The mom prayed and she says, Lord, I don't know what to do with these kids. I don't know what, 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 what to do with them. Please give me wisdom. Uh, uh, and, 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 and God told her, says, I want you, every time they get in trouble, go ahead and make them, uh, take them to the library, make them read a book and make them write a report for you. And here's this thing about it. Here's the kicker. She didn't even know how to read herself. She didn't know how to read herself, but yet she went ahead and did it and followed it. And, 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 and because he would go, that punishment later on became his passion. That punishment became his passion and he wanted to go to the library and he would learn and he got better grades in school and, and you know, and, and so on and so on. And, and, and God blessed him. And so, but all of that happened because mama Carson said, God, I need wisdom. I don't know what to do with my child. So if you need wisdom, you don't know what to do. Ask God and he'll help you and he'll show you what to do. All right. Point number three. Here's the next thing we got to pray for. Pray for God's discernment. Pray for God's discernment. Pray that God gives you discernment. Pray that God shows you exactly what to do during the situation. Discernment, discernment. All right, discernment. The best way that I I, I like to you know say discernment. It's 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 like a radar. Okay. God has a radar for you. He has something that, that he's, he's, he's giving you a detector. He's showing you, you know, what's good, what's bad. He, he it's, it's, it's discernment that, that, that you need. So pray about that. You know, Abraham had a tough decision to make. He either kept Ishmael with Isaac who would have potentially damaged the future of Isaac, or he would have Ishmael and Hagar leave so that Isaac would have a clear future. Uh, what, what, what do you do? What do you do in that situation? We need God's discernment to lead our family and our children need discernment as well to make sure that they have the right friends, the right influences, make sure that they take the right classes, that they go to the right school, that they get the right career, and eventually also marry the right person. So for all of that, you need discernment. You need the, 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 the prompting of the Holy Spirit, the nudges of the Holy Spirit, the leading of the Holy Spirit to do those things. Here's what, here's what Paul says in Philippians chapter one, verse nine through 11 says this, and this, I pray that your love may abound still more and more in knowledge and all discernment that you may approve the things that are excellent 
that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. So I'll, let's 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 look at that. He, I, I want you to I want you to look at that again with me. He says, and, and and this I pray that your love may abound still more and more in knowledge and in what all discernment. So Paul's saying, I want you to grow in both knowledge and discernment. Why do we not need knowledge and discernment? Because he tells you in verse ten that you may approve the things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. So we need wisdom and we need knowledge. We need discernment so that we can approve the things that are excellent. Well, well that's great, Pastor. But but what are the things that are excellent? What are the things that we should be uh, that we should be approving? Well, I'm glad that you asked the question, because later on in that same passage, we just in Philippians chapter four, verse eight and nine. Paul tells you the things that you should approve. Paul tells you the things that we should be longing for. Watch this. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8 9 says this. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do and the God of peace will be with you. Did you see that? That if you do these things, if you follow these things, if you meditate on these things, the peace of God will be with you. That means you're going to have discernment. You're going to understand that the peace of God is going to lead you to the right way. And the best way for you to follow God is to follow peace. When he gives you peace, he's going to give you peace that surpasses what? All understanding. That's what discernment is. When the peace of God surpasses all understanding, surpasses all knowledge, it doesn't make sense. It, it, it doesn't. It doesn't align maybe with 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 what the facts are. But I'm going to step out in faith because God's telling me that this is okay. That this is something that I should do. Listen. That that then you're going to be able to do that. So so what does it mean? So here's what here's what 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 that verse means. So we need to focus on things that are true. Okay, things that are true. So if it's true. If it's true, that means that you should not be lying. Okay. If it's true, the opposite of truth is lying. If it's noble, what does it mean to be noble? It's high moral principles and ideals. That's what noble means. What does it mean to be just? Just means based on or behaving according to what is morally right and fair. So that's the way we should live our lives. True, noble, just. We should also be working and doing things that are lovely. What does it mean for it to be lovely? Well, when it's the, the definition of lovely means very pleasant or enjoyable, delightful. Okay. We should do things that are good report. All right. What is this, What is it? What's something that has a good report? It's got a good reputation. So if, if we do things that don't give us a good reputation or don't give worse, we don't give God a good reputation then we don't need to be doing that. That's the way we discern our decisions by doing these things. The next thing he says, whatever is virtue, it has virtue. All right. What does virtue mean? It means it's behavior showing moral standards, praiseworthy. It's deserving approval and admiration. So if we do those, the, these things, if we follow these things that are lovely, good report, virtue, praiseworthy, we do these things then we're going to have the discernment to, to, to do the right stuff and, and get away from, from the negative things and get away from things that God does not want us to do. We're going to have discernment that way. And we've got to teach our children and family how to do that and how to live according to that. Let's read that one more time. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8 and 9. And it says this, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do and the God of peace will be with you. So when we do these things and follow them, God is going to be with us. Here's number four, last one. We got to pray for boldness. We got to pray 
for boldness. And listen, in, 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 in back in our text in, in Genesis, Abraham loved Ishmael. He loved him so much. He was, he, it hurt him to have to do this, but he needed boldness to do the right thing. Was it the right thing to do? Yes, because God told him, this is what you need to do. You need to send him away. Now, I don't like the way he did it. He could have done it a better way. God didn't instruct him just to give him bread and water. Okay, that was, that was just Abraham. All right. But God did say, you need to send him away. Go ahead and, and, and send him to a different place. But, but he needed boldness to do the right thing. We need boldness to make tough decisions. We need boldness to be a parent. We need boldness to... The, to to not be a friend, but be a parent. Okay, it, this is your 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 kids are gonna have plenty of friends. It's not your responsibility to be their friend. To be their friend, it's your responsibility to be the parent. We have to be the parents and step up and be bold during this time because our our kids need parents. All right, and and to say here's another thing we we need boldness. We need boldness to say no to the good things. But yes, to the God things, all right? There's a lot of good things out there. There's a lot of things that you could be part of. But is it God's will? Is it really something that, that you should be doing? Listen, our time is limited. I hope that this time now, I hope that by being at home and being with your family, being with your kids, you, you're getting to reevaluate and say, you know what? Maybe we didn't need all those extracurricular activities. Maybe we didn't need to do all those things that 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 we, that that we're supposed to be doing or have to do or society tells us to do. No, we, we need to take a break and just enjoy our family and do that. So reprioritize your family and, and, and evaluate. If it doesn't need to be in your home, get rid of it. All right. If it doesn't need to be in your schedule, get rid of it. All right. Remove it and get rid of the good things. Now, those things could be good. They, they could be fun. They could be great. I know school has a lot of good activities, but are they godly activities? Are the activities that bring us closer to God? If they're not for God, get rid of them. All right, remove them from your life, remove them from your heart. We need boldness. All right, we need boldness. How we're going to receive boldness? We're going to receive boldness through the Holy Spirit. Okay, the Bible tells us in Acts chapter four. Acts chapter four, verse thirteen says this. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled and they realized that they had been with Jesus. Now, let me tell you something. You, you know how you're going to get boldness when you hang out with Jesus. All right. When you hang out with Jesus, when you hang out in his presence, when you hang out with with him, you're going to receive boldness. How are you going to receive boldness? The very the, the verse right there. Acts chapter one, eight says this. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. How was Peter able to be bold in Acts chapter four? He was able to be bold in Acts chapter four because he received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Spirit, the promise in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 he received it and he received the power of the Holy Spirit and because of that he was able to be bold so each and every one of us listen we need the boldness of God we need to pray for our children to have boldness boldness to say no to drugs boldness to say no to alcohol boldness to say no to the influences of the enemy Boldness to say no to invitations to sin and to the temptations of the world. So what, what causes a person to be bold? What causes them to be bold? Well, we've got, we've got to walk bold. We've got to walk with the Holy Spirit and let the Holy Spirit fill us up. All right. We, when, when you have someone on your side, you can walk boldly. When you have someone on your side, you can walk with your with your head lifted high, with your chest up, and and understand that 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 you you can do this. You know why you can do this? Here's here's why you can do this because Romans chapter eight verse thirty one tells you this. Okay, what then? What then shall we say of these things? If God is for you, who can be? against you so you can walk confidently you can walk with power you can walk with with understanding that god is for you he's not against you that he he's he's with you so listen wherever you go you can walk with boldness because god the ceo of the universe the creator of everything he's for you and he's not against you here's the next verse first john chapter 4 verse 4 says this you are of god little children you are of God, little children, and have overcome them because 
He who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Come on. The power in the Holy Spirit, the anointing of the Holy Spirit is greater inside of you than anything that the devil's thrown out there. It's greater than the coronavirus. It's greater than any power. It's greater than any principality. It is great. The power that is inside of you is greater than anything that the enemy can throw against you. So walk in boldness, walk in the anointing. Let's be parents. Let's be what God has called us to be and follow him with all of our heart. Let's pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for homes right now. I pray for everyone that's here, Father. Lord, I pray for everyone that's listening to, to me, Father, and watching this video. God, in the name of Jesus, I pray for your boldness and your anointing to fall fresh over them right now. God, in the name of Jesus, give them boldness to say no. Give them of your anointing, Father, to say no to the things of the enemy and the things of the world. But give them of your power and your anointing, God, so that they can walk according to your word, according to your power, according to what you want them to do. God, in the name of Jesus, pour out your spirit, Father, over those homes, God. We call those homes protected. We call those homes anointed. We call those homes filled with your power, filled with your anointing, Father. And I thank you that your spirit, God, is moving deep inside of them, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. May you rule in their homes, God. I pray for every parent, God, that is there, Father, that is out there, Lord, that is watching this, Lord. I pray that they become, Lord, bold, Father. And I pray that you give them wisdom. I pray that you give them discernment, Lord Jesus. I pray that you give them courage and that they do what you've called them to do. Father, in the name of Jesus, bless them, Father. Bless them, Lord. Give them creativity, Father. Give them the knowledge. Give them the, 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 the things that they need to do, Father, so that your name will be exalted and use this family. Use these families, Father, for your glory, God, in the name of Jesus. And we just thank you, Father. We pray that this word was a blessing to them, Father. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Listen, I want to thank you for joining us. Thank you for, for joining us for, for, for Bible study here on Wednesday. Listen, we're, we're going to be streaming uh, through Facebook. We're going to be streaming through YouTube. And, and we're just excited that you're, you get to be part of us. If there's anything that you need, please let us know. We're here for you. We're praying for you. And, and we're believing for God to give us a victory in Jesus' name. We're so excited. We've got some wonderful plans. We've got some wonderful uh, top secret things that we're going to be doing for Easter. I can't tell you, but but we're super excited about about that and uh, and, and what God's what God's going to do some amazing surprises. And so we're we're just excited that we're going to get to do this uh, uh, one way or another. Listen, we're going to preach the gospel. God's called us to preach the gospel. Pray for us. We're praying for you. And uh, so keep us in your prayers that we just continue to do what God's called us to do. Amen. And, and just remember, listen, if, if you haven't, if you have not been able to, make sure you get online and give. make sure you give your tithe, give your offerings there online. You can do that through uh, through our website. And also, if you if you're or if you're mailing a check. Make sure you send it to our P.O. Box. Don't send it to our physical address. Send it to our P.O. Box, P.O. Box 518, Hearst, Texas, uh, 76053. Send it there and we will be able to, uh, to receive it uh, here. So make sure you don't send it to our physical address. All right? God bless you. We hope to see you Sunday. Join us uh, Sunday morning at 1030 through either Facebook or YouTube. And we hope that this word was a blessing to you. Amen.